So I've been talking with uh, James and Dan and Jamie about coming over here and training with the guys. And then there was a Bellator event uh, this weekend. So I thought it's perfect timing. I'll go watch the Bellator event, support the event, and then I can come and train with the guys over here. So James and Jamie picked me up at the airport and we drove like two hours, I think. Drove to the fucking gas station and got some in our stomach, some to eat, a coffee, and then we drove straight to sparring with Dan and Jimmy and uh, Veronica. Uh, after the fight, uh, I fought back in March, right? Yeah. And he low calf kicked a lot. And then all the swelling went up to my knee and it wouldn't like go away by itself. So I had to get it drained. Yeah. I had like a titty on my knee like for like one and a half month. Nasty. But no pain. No. Nothing at all. Did you ever see the fight with Paddy Pimlet against uh, Sorrow Sorry, Yeah, I saw that. Like, a rear naked choke fully sunk in the first round. Or, or I think it was, um, what the fuck was it? Kimbo Slice and Ken Shamrock, I think it was the same. Same thing? Yeah. Where Ken had him. And then Kimbo got, got out. Charles went down a bit delayed. Did you think that was delayed or intentional? Like, yeah, that, see, one, that was that weird. Was that was weird. He's like, and then, <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> was weird. So yeah, that was weird as well. I did think for a second. I thought he's trying to punk him here. Yeah, I'm yeah. To, get to rush him. Yeah, I'm really digging the outfit, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, oh, oh he's <laughs> <laughs> Had me distract. These fucking kicks, you don't want to mess with them. You see how flexible? <laughs> <laughs> Any particular sequences? No, no, you need to do it. You need to do it. Nice and simple, then. Just, we'll, just, we'll just work your pace, but we'll keep switching. Let's just start nice and simple. I just want to jab drift into the open side and then body shot and back out. No, no, just stick with it. Switch it back out. What I'm doing on that body shot, I'm going pat, pat, and I'm dropping this back foot to get a bit of length on it to allow my, my, my lower my level. I'm doing a lot of this on body shots now, especially if I'm in close. I'll drop that back shot, that back leg back, to create a bit more space for myself. And that also allows my, ret my retreat. And I'm already halfway out again. Yeah, just start with that nice and simple. Yeah, I hate drills. <laughs> Why do you hate drills? Because it's boring as fuck, and I, uh, I like drilling while I spar. So I like, uh. If I see somebody doing a move, I try it on somebody, like, uh, if I want to learn a new move, I find somebody that is not very good or punch very hard, and then I try to drill them that move and let them do, like, they do their shit on me, but I'm just trying to get this move to work. And when that move works on the lesser skilled guys, then you can go it on a little more skilled guy and a little more skilled guy and a little more skilled guy, and all of a sudden it's just in your, in your arsenal. Yeah, but I hate drilling, and and I'm not saying like this is the only way. There's many different way, many different ways to drill. Like we're all different. We all learn different. Like so, whatever fits you is good for you. So today is uh, Thursday morning. Normally I do a session at home today, but uh, we've got Mads Bunnell down, and he's a great boxer as well as a, a, one of the best MMA fighters in the world. So. Wanted to pick his brains a bit and get him on the mats with Jimmy. So came in and did some did some uh, punch combinations uh, just back and forth. There's just there's a few sequences that I've been working. I've been running some things on the bag um, that I want to start now transferring over onto people when they're moving. Just certain things that I know they're going to work well for me in the fight and making sure that my feet are underneath me as we're going and then extending the combinations out. So you know, it's like, it's like the trunk of a tree. Like the trunk of the tree is the combination that I know is gonna start, but then he could go three or four different ways and I want answers to the, all of his directions. So we did some of that. And then we just did some touch sparring rounds. Um, I mean, obviously Jimmy is super high pressure, real tough, bullying with his hands, digging and you know, really like high paced. And it's been a while since I've sparred with Jimmy as well. And then Mads, I've never sparred with Mads. And he's got, 
he's, he's one of the few fighters in mixed martial arts that's able to use the Philly shell really well. And it's such a difficult style to deal with because it puts them always right in striking range on your front foot. So you're constantly having to deal with their attack and at the same time trying to find channels for your own. Um, really high pace as well. And he's in good shape, and even, even though he'll say he's not. His pace is really good. Good sparring going with Dan and, and Jimmy. Like, of course, I've seen Dan since I started watching MMA. He's a fucking legend. Like, I was about to say pioneer, but I wouldn't even call him a pioneer. Dan is a fucking legend for European MMA. And uh, I've heard so much about Jimmy from all the other guys uh, around like Europe, how uh, much of a killer he is. So it was fun finally like getting to go some rounds with these two, these two guys. It was pretty much, going with Dan was pretty much what I expected. Like he's a crisp puncher and like he's very good at, uh, like he's very good fighting uh, from distance. Uh, I think he's pretty good at controlling the range. Like yeah, he's a, he's a vet. Moves like a vet, talks like a vet, thinks like a vet. So, I think it's very good. What kind of fight do you think Diego is going to bring to that? I think, like with all due respect, Diego only has one way of fighting, and it's just like straightforward balls to the wall. And I think that's what he's going to try to do to Dan. It would be highly uh, unexpected. If Diego comes out and like uh, stinks like a butterfly and what the fuck they say, dance like a butterfly, sting like a bee, <laughs> uh, that would be uh, highly, uh, what the fuck do you call it, unexpected, yeah. So I think he's just going to try to go straight at Dan. Just all the, It's all about composure. When a dude comes out swinging at you, the harder he punches at you, the um the softer you should punch at him it sounds fucked up because if you go hard on hard then you're both gonna gas but if you just let him like punch himself out then you're all good and then go to the body and then chop that tree down and it's it's gonna be good night it's a typical question i suppose but did anything in there surprise you um when sparring jimmy or mads um the, the the speed of it the speed of, of uh, particularly with Mads the speed of his reactions in, on counters you know like like will work certain things like you know you, you block a shot to the body and then this the counter up the, sh the center channel or you'll block a shot here and you come up the center or here and like his counters are super quick but that's because he's relaxed that's because he's doing this a lot of the time so he's just kind of flowing through stuff. And he's usually working with guys that he's got a bit of an edge on as well, you, so you can see he's refining those techniques. Um, yeah, certainly. I mean, it's my first day of sparring today, really, for camp. Um, but I, I, it, it showed a few areas of my game where I need to tweak and sharpen and speed up. But I didn't feel too bad today. I didn't feel too bad. My weight's coming down. I'm starting to feel my abs through my belly fat, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just run me down on the grappling. Um, what was it like to to see Mads' Japanese, Japanese necktie. I've pulled back on grappling quite a bit recently and uh, you know, and I miss it a lot because it's a different different kind of physical test to, to boxing sparring. You know, boxing sparring, you contract and you tense and then you fire when you throw. But with grappling, it's all static contraction and bracing and building frames. And it, again, Mads is incredibly strong. Same as Jimmy, you know, both of them together, they've got a, a very similar style in that they don't mind using a bit of strength to force you into the mat, but then their technique backs it up. And some of the, 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 the little hip shuffles and stuff that Mads was doing was really nice. So it, I, I just, I couldn't miss the opportunity. I, I'll return to grappling in a few weeks when, uh, when, when boxing's out the way. Um, because I do see Diego and I being on a Polaris at some point in the future, and that would be a good test for me. Um, yeah, always good. Always good to learn something new. And Mads has got a whole suitcase full of techniques I'd like to steal off him.